All right, and we are live. Uh, it's Mary Alice Curran with the Digital Citizenship Institute alongside my colleague in Mexico, Eugenia Tazmez. And Hola. Hi, everyone. Yeah, we are so excited. This is our first live deep dive summer session. And we're so happy that we get to kick it off with um, our partners. And so if I'm to say anything, let's give a shout out again. I'll keep, I'll always do this to Noah Daniel um, because her podcast is the reason why this partnership, you know, why we're even here today. So thank you, Noah, because since, since that podcast, we've done some incredible things with Steve and Ivy. They joined us for our Digit Summit um, in partnership um, with the California School Librarian Association. That was in January. And then just last week, we hosted uh, a Digit Summit around civic readiness. It was specifically designed for New York educators, but it was open to all. And we really feel like that idea of civic readiness, digital citizenship, it's under the larger umbrella of Use Tech for Good. But what we really love about Steve and Ivy is this focus specifically around digital wellness, um, around empathy to impact, and that to us, that natural connection to being balanced. And so I feel like our last session, it, like that day was like a whirlwind. The day was intended to be um, inspire conversation, make connections, build community, but this deep dive, we have this opportunity to dive a little bit deeper because the month of July, which is like we can practically touch it, it's right around the corner. We have this incredible opportunity with this course with both Steve and Ivy around eco media, eco photography. It's been designed for families. So, what a great opportunity for educators, right? Let's unplug, let's get our kids, uh, let's get our partners, our spouses, our grandparents, our neighbors, and let's do something collectively together in nature. What a wonderful way to be balanced during the summer um, and really promote as we get ready for that next school year too, that balance for digital wellness. And so we are so happy. Juania, I know that your background in particular is in Spanish. So do you want to give a quick about this partnership as well? Yeah, I'm really excited. And uh, it's in Spanish, as you can see because this course, it doesn't matter what language or which part of the world you are. You can join us. Ecophotography can be totally global, totally uh, a way to get people together from different parts of the world and bring this empathy to impact they promote to become a reality. So I'm pretty excited to uh, promote this course also to Spanish speaking communities. This is wonderful. So we're gonna go in the background Steve and Ivy, we're going to let you take it away. We're so excited about having this opportunity for this deeper dive, which is really a huge invitation for this global audience to join us um, during the month of July. Well, thanks so much, Mary Alice, Eugenia, and Ivy, obviously, who is over right now in Shanghai. And I'm here actually calling in from The Hague. And um, yeah, it's just been, it's kind of been, like you said, a whirlwind on a many levels. And it's just exciting to think about how you know this is going to be an opportunity not only for you know, our partners that are over in North America and in, in Mexico and South America and Central America to join us in this endeavor, teachers, families, educators, you know, people like yourselves running organizations, but then to just bring it into this kind of global context. And you'll hear me today talking a lot about civics and global citizenship because in Inspire Citizens, that's really what we bring to whole school communities. And Ivy, I'll introduce you now, your specialty be really being in that digital wellness and ecology background. You wanna just briefly share a little bit of that. And hey, every, uh, hey everyone, I'm Ivy. I'm right now based in Shanghai and it's 12.04 midnight. <laughs> I'm still awake uh, and very happy to meet you all on online. Uh, so my background is uh, deep ecology, which is you know how to build meaningful connection with nature and see everything in nature you know, as a sentient being. Uh, not something, you know, inanimate. So how to build, you know, that deep relationship. Um, and also I've studied in Bhutan, um, uh, the growth national happiness. So my work is to bring, you know, deep ecology and um, happiness and well-being into education, you know, into the schools. Uh, you know, so simply put, you know, to, 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 to make people 
a bit more happier, you know, with themselves, you know, with others in the classroom, you know, in their family, their office, and also, you know, um, being in harmony with our beautiful planet. Yeah, and really quickly to, to sort of piggyback on something Mary Alice said is, you know, we're going to definitely unplug and get you guys in the space of you know, reconnecting with nature and, and our society and the planet and ourselves. But we're going to ask you, you know, to definitely, you know, use this thing here. You know, mine is that SE and just getting into the space of, you know, how is it that we can leverage our technology for good? And the space that we really wanted to, you know, encourage, you know, in the eco media space that we do on our website one of the pathways to that is through is through digital photography and photography in general. So we're gonna kind of dive right in. We're gonna give you a little bit of background knowledge on what's coming in the course in July, put you into a few of the scenarios, maybe do a few think alouds like we do, would do in our photography workshop. And then we're gonna kind of open the floor up to questions and answers, assuming we have a few minutes left, and maybe even throw Mary Alice and Yohani into the fire a little bit to talk a little bit about their own photography and what they're looking forward to in the course. So with that said, I'm going to share my screen and we can kind of dive right in. So give me just a second here. And again, you can see here, Ivy, you can see that. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So guys, when you're, you know, when you're working with Inspire Citizens in the space and this online experience and in the, you know, experience you're going to be bringing into, you know, you know, your everyday experience and noticing the world around you, you know, we're going to be really honing in on these four elements, compassion, connection, understanding and action. And, you know, that's going to be self, your community and nature. So you'll see that coming out throughout all the things we're going to be talking about as we go forward. And what we want to really start with, and we're going to go through a little bit of a why, what, how protocol today while we share this with you, is just a little bit about the why of Ecomedia to get us a little bit of context. So Ivy, you want to give us some background on this, please? Um, yeah, so um, I guess, you know, we are surrounded by, uh, you know, endless type of media and technology, right? We use our phone to work, you know, to connect to people, to talk to our family, you know, to get to know what's going on in the world. But because, you know, there are so much things going on in, you know, that small screen um, in our hands, and we are consuming lots of, you know, information, lots of visuals, images, you know, sounds all the time. But also at the meantime, you know, we are producing, right, uh, this content by sending out, you know, a Twitter, you know, and an Instagram. But, you know, if we step back, right, and if you look at the two images, you know, imagine we are, you know, that boy in the photo. Are we eating, you know, um, things like anger, anxiety, depression, right? Or are we, um, you know, feeding um, ourselves, you know, with love, with gratitude, you know, with connection. So this is actually something, you know, the media and technology, they do to our mind and heart all the time, whether we are aware, you know, or not aware of that. So, you know, as well, we actually, you know, don't pay much attention to the food, to our mind and heart as much, you know, as we pay attention to the food we eat, but really, you know, the media, you know, the, the technology, they are the means, you know, and they are the food to our mind and heart. So, you know, how can we take good care of our, you know, mind and heart to, to you know, to, to feel well when we are engaged with technology? And this is, you know, all the reasons behind uh, eco-media and why we want to, you know, shape media and technology to re-engage with that so we can use it, you know, meaningfully. And Eugenia and um, Mary Alice were talking about Empathy to Impact, and that is one of our hashtags that you'll see. If you follow hashtag Empathy to Impact on Twitter, for example, you'll see quite a, a storyline there about all the ways around the world that Inspire Citizens works with, you know, Whole school communities, teachers, and students to bring, you know, deeper level of heart, head, and hands into, you know, whether it's learning experience, standalone, you know, after school activities. But really, what we try to do is embed this type of thinking and this type of, you know, this type of empathy, compassion, the connections, and that understanding, and then that action into, you know, everyday curriculum. And you know, in eco photography, you know, you're going to start to see the way that we especially connect to the planet into our technology and utilizing those to answer questions that are built off of what we care about in the world and about in nature, society, and ourselves, what inspires us, right? And then even jumping forward to 
how is it then that we can use photography to advocate, right? That advocacy photography component, you know, especially as we reconnect in ways that we're trying to make our world, you know, we talked about digital wellness, a happier and healthier place. And the connection and understanding piece really comes out with, you know, asking our, our learners, and in this case, again, for this summer experience, to think like a photographer. What does it mean to think like an advocate or a researcher when we go and we observe or a botanist and we start to engage with, you know, the nature around us? And it really can bring out, you know, these new skills and dispositions in ourselves that sometimes maybe we didn't even know we had or maybe we did have, but we just needed that little push to get back into that thinking and that cognitive mindset. So really now we want to go into the what. And Ivy, do you want to briefly give us an overview of just Ecomedia in and of itself? Um, so first of all, you know, eco media, right? We we frame, you know, all the media programs we do with the title eco. And why is that? You know, it's not just about nature, um, because you know the original Greek word of eco means um, means our home, right? And so nature is our home, and we try to you know use media as a skillful means for us to to rediscover nature. So what is really nature? Is it just a natural environment around us? Or can we see it, you know, in us, we are part of nature. And can we, you know, see it in another human being? And how can we develop, you know, this eco mindset where we embrace, you know, diversity, where we focus on, you know, interbeing, connection, and, you know, the collective wellness. So that's the purpose of all of our eco media uh, programs. And um, as you can see here in the posters, uh, we have defined, you know, a few genres um, that we have ecophotography out of the blocks, you know, which is um, that how to, you know, how, how you go out in your community and, you know, interview with people, train your deep, you know, active listening, generative dialogue, you know, to get the stories out. So to really appreciate, you know, the people around you know around you but who might be different from you you know how to respect them you know how to see the value and beauty in them um and another thing you know debate forward right we we often have debate quite popular in our schools but you know usually it's to win over the other person you know to convince the other person what we believe you know that we are right but then you know especially in the time that we are living now you know when we are facing uh, super, super complicated, you know, system problems and, you know, all different stakeholders have very different um, opinions. So how can we collaborate, right? And the foundation is, you know, how can we understand each other? So debate, you know, can be used as a really effective means for us to debate, but in order to reach to a consensus, you know, to a collective shared aspiration or goal so we can work together. And then, you know, acoustic ecology, as you can see from the poster, uh, that, that's, you know, how we can engage with mindfulness uh, through listening, you know, so we can, uh, and we use the sound en engineering to capture the sound around us, you know, bird sounds, you know, wind songs, and human sounds, and how, you know, that can help us to, uh, to, to cultivate uh, wellness. And one thing that we want to make sure is really clear is a lot of, you know, the work that we've been doing is it's not just in that theoretical space, right? We, with Inspire Citizens, we've been working in school communities for over five years now and really ground up working with, you know, teachers and students on the ground and sometimes co-facilitating as we're going to be doing this summer in this particular program. But then to see, you know, not only the students taking control of their own learning and the agency and these different channels that Ivy described or these different learning experiences, but then to see those the demonstrations of this learning and the excitement and the storytelling and the, the photography and the videos and the sound engineering and all those technology skills that come out, you know, being used again to make our world a better place. And if you go to our website, you'll notice at the top, one of the tabs there is, it has an Ecomedia tab and you can visit some of the student work and learn more about these things that Ivy was just sharing. So today though, we really want to get into is ecophotography because that's the the summer course that's starting here on July, 1st, on July 1st. And again, that head, heart, hands component really builds ourselves around a harmony with nature in our hearts. Wabi-sabi is actually a Japanese philosophy of impermanence and, and transience and seeing the beauty in that and the possibility that comes alongside impermanence, right? And that idea that 
you know, there's such beauty in cycles and the way that, you know, we can change and evolve and, you know, be, be vulnerable and comfortable in that space so that we can be more mindful and have more gratitude in the way that, as Ivy mentioned, that we generate, you know, a future that's, that's better for all of us. Uh, thinking again, like an advocacy photographer, an ecologist, an environmentalist, an artist, how are we sharing our artist statements in this space? Again, if we're bringing in literacy, we can have speaking and listening in that space. We can have reading and writing of the work, you know, the artist statements and the work that comes, you know, into a sense of artistry in that and, and imagining how that could even be in an interdisciplinary unit inside our classrooms. And of course, the visual literacy, right? The visual communication, the curation, the imagination, and then those applied skills of photography and techniques. Those are the things in essence we're doing with the learning, we're doing with our hands. So that is what is empathy to impact about this experience. And Ivy, just a brief maybe minute, just talking a little bit about the bigger takeaways. Um, so, you know, definitely a key, key um, area we focus on is digital wellness, because, you know, we are all very familiar with how we get depleted, but, right, by engaging too much with our screen and technology. But then, you know, this course is aimed to promote, you know, digital wellness so we can use media and technology for good for ourselves, you know, for, for our community and also for, the, um, for our planet. Um, and also, you know, to develop uh, civic readiness uh, by, you know, um, reconnecting us with nature in a deep and meaningful way. And how we are going to do that, you know, is to, um, is to engage, you know, all parts of our learning, um, and our, our learning components, which is heart, head and hands. We are going to, you know, engage all of them in our learning uh, during uh, the in the eco photography program. So let's talk a little bit then about the how, because you know if you sign up for this program and you saw this image behind a few of us when you first when you first logged in, the syllabus, the way we've set this up is is kind of twofold. Well, really threefold. One is that you've got your key concepts out here, and these key concepts such as health and diversity, interdependence, oneness, and so on, those are what are often called the principles of harmony with nature. But the beautiful thing about that, and, and this was what was kind of mentioned up here in the civic readiness part, portion of the last slide, is that the, you can transfer some of those key concepts now into the way that we see our built environment, the way that we interact with our environment around us. So we'll be actually starting with nature photography, but then we'll actually be moving into architecture photography as a different genre. And then finally looking at where do we see diversity, interdependence, inter interdependence health and oneness and cycles and adaptation in ourselves and in our communities, asking ourselves similar questions about what are the values of those particular concepts, right? Is our community healthier when it's diverse and interdependent? How do we seek greater oneness and adapt to, you know, the future challenges? And, and a lot of ways, just asking questions of what can we learn from nature by engaging with these particular principles to then transfer into our more human-centered, you know, lives and the way that we interact and design, you know, experiences in our world. Here inside that is also, you, you know, as you sign up, we use a program, a learning management system called Open Learning, which is extremely interactive. And this is what you would see on the inside as a, as a learner. And what these courses then open up to is a really almost like a workshop based experience. So we start often with a foundations and flow, or in this case, most of the modules are going to have a specific um, principle of harmony, right? So you might see diversity here. You might see cycles here in some of the other courses or modules. And then we'll be looking a little bit at a skill focus, right? And sometimes we'll also establish a greater purpose. And then often we'll be looking at a mentor. In this case, it's nature itself. But we have other experiences where we look at some amazing photographers around the world, such, such as Sebastião Salgado from Brazil, who is just you know one of the most famous and, and most powerful and passionate photographers around you know nature advocacy and reconnecting with the beauty of the planet that's our second module that's called the love letter to the planet so we'll be studying Sebastião salgado's work in order that then we just like in a readers and writers workshop can flip that around into to our own projects and our own art and our own photography each week at the end of each week we'll have an optional live community photography zoom seminar in two different time zones so it'll have opportunities for us as a cohort 
then to get together and talk not only and celebrate our own photography and our own deep thinking, but also you know, how is it that we might utilize these types of concepts or even the photography itself in our own classrooms, schools, communities, or organizations. And Ivy, again, maybe briefly, just a little bit on how we came up with this, uh, kind of some guiding questions for you know, an eventual portfolio or an exhibition. Um, as Steve mentioned earlier, you know, the purpose of ecophotography is basically us you know, learning from nature, right? Because usually we learn about nature, but here, you know, we learn from nature. So that's also how we get inspiration, you know, to the portfolio uh, in the program. So we have different uh, stages, which is very intuitive, right? That's how, you know, a plant grows, right? We start from planting the seeds and that starts from, you know, develop a, 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 um, develop a um, your awareness, you know, about nature, about, you know, yourself. Um, and how do you see them, right? And then, you know, when the seed sprout a little bit, you know, okay, once you have, you know, you have opened up your awareness and then, you know, how can you um, demonstrate, you know, a deeper compassion and understanding of the world, you know, by learning from the mentors. And then, you know, the roots, you know, grows and then, you know, into buds and, all, and in the end, you know, become flowers and blossoming. And so you can see the progression, you know, of, of our different learning outcomes um, throughout the whole journey. Um, and that's, you know, how we plan, you know, it's like, you know, a participant of the eco-photography program, you know, all of us, we, we are a tiny, tiny seed. And, you know, that's how we take care of, you know, um, all the learners and through those, you know, eco journey while we're doing eco photography. And Ivy, as you mentioned, too, I think there's a lot of tie ins to these four key components. Again, those four elements that are really tied to empathy to impact is, again, building greater compassion, connection, understanding and action through photography, first with ourselves and then to the planet itself and then also to our communities and others. And it's such a it's such a fantastic way to you know utilize photography and our, our literacy skills and this sense of civic readiness to to you know build upon for technology for good. So the last thing that we wanted to share with you today is just some demonstrations of learning, right? And the cool thing about doing it this summer is you know you're going to get to wear your student hat. And Ivy and I just wanted to share a couple of our you know one of our each of our own photos that we often share with students when we're taking students into the space. And, you know, if you look at the heart, head and hands, you know, as these particular questions, this was actually I was just on a hike uh, a couple of years ago, right at the beginning of COVID outside of Chicago. And I just walked around the corner in a field and just happened on to this amazing scene. Right. And and there's so much going on here in terms of just the awe and the wonder of nature, you know, that that brings us you know, closer to you know, if we're going to want to you know, work to save the planet, it's it, it's really important that we have an awe and a wonder and appreciation and a love for it. And just this this particular scene was just so dramatic for me and, and it just filled my heart. And then when I saw this particular sunflower, you know, looking at it through that lens of Wabi Sabi, this idea that this is not by any means the perfect sunflower, but it just it stood out as just so beautiful and strong and, and really resilient. Right. It shows a perseverance and resilience. That's also something, you know, that that is carried throughout, you know, what hopefully we're teaching our kids and hopefully we're, we're engaging with ourselves in our own experiences as teachers. In the head, you know, what, how did I frame this? What were some of the color choices, maybe the enhancements? You know, uh, did I use a portrait style on my phone or, you know, a close up? What was my point of view? All of these types of things become part of what I was doing as a photographer. And then how did I make a print? Where did I maybe share this? How did I get this out to a greater community? like I am now. And this is a photograph I often use in Inspire Citizens when I'm talking about these types of things. So using, again, my photography to spark people to a sense of awe and wonder with nature and to just, you know, reconnect with nature and the beauty of, of this of this scene and the transience in the sunflower. Ivy, you want to give us a little background on this picture? Yeah, just very briefly. Um, you know, I... Um, my biggest take, my biggest takeaway um, from eco photography is actually it has helped me to to develop more appreciation um, towards you know city life, and you know this is um, a reflection of a tree um, in the cup of coffee I was having back then, and because you know I had eco photography in my mind, so then I paid more attention you know to my surrounding to my everyday moments. 
And then I just realized, you know, even in a uh, very mundane moment, you know, uh, sitting, uh, sitting in a cafe, I was able, you know, to notice the interdependence, you know, of our city life and nature. And actually, you know, they could live in harmony with each other. So that really, you know, has helped me to, to, to love um, a city more. Um, so which is very, very healing. And I think, you know, that made me feel a lot more better when I, when I live in a city. And I love that you talked about that too, because one of the biggest takeaways I've seen when we work with our students, and these are some student examples recently from some middle school students that we just worked with in Beijing, was that mindful component. The mindfulness of the way that now they're walking amongst their, you know, their, their neighborhood or their community. The mindfulness in the way that they've decided to make some of those choices inside their photography, right? And the mindfulness of how they're becoming more, you know, compassionate with their their understanding of their feelings and, and their emotions. And, you know, especially this time of COVID and, and all of the, the complexities that we face in the world to sometimes to, to go back to simplifying and to, you know, what is it really that connects us to ourselves and the earth and to others in ways that can be positive and mindful and heartful? So Sarah here, this is a great example of her looking at the delicacy of flowers. And these are in some of the nature photos. This one is Liam, you know, looking at the resilience of this particular, you know, sprout as he calls it. But he also, again, look at how he's referencing one of our mentor photographers that I just mentioned and talking about why this is his love letter to the planet. Ivy, did you want to mention just a little bit what you saw in some of these pictures of students and, and how they reacted to their the architecture, the, the our built environment? Yeah, so, you know, these architecture photo, as you can see from this one, um, it captures, you know, the story of friendship, of, you know, of emotions facing a friend, you know, leaving Beijing. Um, and then, you know, the next one, uh, uh, the, the three buildings, you know, they, they are quite signature buildings in Beijing. And you can see, you know, the, the imagination here, right? As the student, you know, zooming, uh, she can see the clouds, you know, they look like, a, um, you know, they see the buildings like a sticker on the cloud, you know, so very playful way, you know, seeing um, our urban life with nature. And so, you know, these imaginations, you know, and emotions, they, they can be, you know, provoked by taking photos and to get deeper, you know, into, um, into how you feel inside and then, you know, project towards, you know, how you see the world, then it becomes, you know, more beautiful, more playful and more joyful. And, you know, it's also a place where you can, where you can land your emotions there. And, you know, one of my favorite modules that we have, I love all seven of the modules on their own, but there's, you know, we get to the end of the course and we start getting into portraiture photography and, and community photography, we also start to embed some of the launches into asking questions and interviewing people in our community that will eventually lead to out of the blocks, which is another uh, of our eco media programs. But you know, this is one of the projects that's inside um, you know this this particular module based on you know connecting with some senior citizens in our community using portraiture photography. Then to ask you know from a set of questions, the kids were asked to then you know pick from and and then pull out some key quotes from these people. And you can see again what was chosen. And, and some of these are just really just wonderful representations of the spirit of the community. And also, again, valuing, you know, both the cycles of life and the, and the wisdoms of, you know, older people in our community and the cultural aspects and just what it is that young people can learn in these types of community partnerships. Right. You know, we don't want kids just going into, commu into these communities, taking pictures, you know, and not really building relationships and these these taking the time to, to meet your neighbors and to utilize that time to you know, connect with these senior citizens was, was definitely one of my highlights of this particular course with the students that we recently just worked with. So you know, in closing, what we were asking to do was we're gonna, we're gonna leave sort of this slide. You can pause the, you know, the, the video as you're watching it or take a screenshot of this. But we're gonna ask you guys to sort of what you just saw, some of those examples from Ivy and my photography and the photography of the kids is to is to pick a you know a principle or two of harmony with nature and you know get into twitter sometime you know today or tomorrow or maybe during the week or definitely when you hopefully sign up for the course with us and you know go out and take some photos find places that you know are either in a built environment like you see here in the way that we build cups or the way that we build 
you know, our, our architecture and the spirals here you might see in a snail shell, but also even some of the relationships in our lives, not only with, you know, plants and, but also the animals in our lives. And just again, bringing out that eco component, you know, through these principles of harmony with nature in your photography. So if you feel inspired over the next 24 to 48 hours, tag us on Twitter, use the eco media hashtag and, you know, drop some pictures in there to warm up for the course. And a reminder of the syllabus is here. So just to, to again, to just see the flow, you see how we're going to be utilizing a deep dive into each of the principles of harmony with nature through a different module that is going to allow us a chance to kind of get in a photography workshop mindset. It's definitely low stress, high fun, but also high impact. So, you know, the, the time commitment isn't crazy. And it's just an opportunity for us to, you know, get together for a month, meet an awesome global cohort and community, and just really have some fun together and have some deep learning that then we can transfer into our different contexts. And Ivy, just want to talk briefly a little bit about registration and when we start. Um, can you send the registration link in the chat as well? Yeah, yeah so, you know, we start... Um, we start on July 1st. So, you know, one week to go for you to register. And, you know, um, you are going to learn and share with a global educator um, community. Uh, and so I think, you know, that's something, uh, well, I personally really, really look forward to uh, for the July summer camp. And lastly, and also guys, here you can, you know, see the, yeah. And also, you know, here you can see our facilitator team. You know, uh, not just Steve and I, and we also have a student, you know, Christina. Uh, she's a high school student. You know, she's our student and she's done the photography program before. And also, by the way, now we have some student registrations. So the educators, you know, you are, you, you are going to have a chance to learn with students and learn from each other. I think, you know, that would be really, really meaningful and can be a cool experience. So yeah, guys, if you have any questions, obviously we'll put some in the chat. I think we have a couple more minutes that we can jump back with uh, Mary Alice and Eugenia to, to break down anything that's been asked, if anything. But you can always reach out to us. You can see both by email and on Twitter. And you can follow both of our hashtags, hashtag EcoMedia, hashtag Empathy to Impact. And I know there's some Digital Citizenship Institute hashtags as well. And Eugenia and Mary Alice, that wasn't too bad for some guy that's super jet lagged and somebody <laughs> that just stayed up <laughs> past 1230 in, in Beijing, China. And we're just really, really excited to, you know, invite this global cohort. I think we already have about 30 teachers and, and folks signed up and it's, it's just going to be a blast and it's going to be some great learning. Oh, well, you know, just in the background, I feel like it was a whirlwind because we were on multiple platforms just like yeah. engaging with people. <laughs> but this is, I mean, the the connection to digital wellness and health and balance and um, going back into nature. I mean, what you just said, there was a part where it was like that intergenerational approach. Like it's not just taking pictures, but it's like those relationship building. And so here's this month of July. What a great opportunity for educators to do this with their families. Like I'm doing it with my son, you know? Um, you know, we're both signed up for this. I know Michael Dresick has joined. Um, he's in the chat. I can even put in just right there so you could see that he gave a hello from New York. Um, he'll be doing it with his um, children as well. Like it's a, but let's get some grandparents involved. Let's get our partners and our spouses. And, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity, um, that true community approach. Yeah, and I love that. And I think it's going to be it's and also really the, the idea, you know, with Eugenia and you can see in the background with Anish and we have Javier in Brazil that was also developing some of this in Portuguese. And, you know, we have kids from Uganda coming in, a couple of fantastic students that are going to be participating that often work as Inspire Citizens interns as well. So, you know, people from China, we have people from Singapore, uh, people from Korea, a few people from Europe as well. Now that I'm here and we're going to be dragging some awesome people in, it's going to be it's going to be a great cohort and I'm just so excited because it's going to also give you that all intercultural competency piece and just really an appreciation for the different types of nature and the different, you know, cultures and the, and the different communities around the world that can really come together around those concepts that we've broken down. And also to start to ask ourselves of like, you know, how can we, you know, really start utilizing these concepts as ways that we can, you know, apply these into all aspects of our world 
in our lives to just, you know, make ourselves a healthier and happier world community, right? And I think that's, um, and, and, a, and local community, right? Right. So I think, right. I think there's just so much potential here. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity to learn from other communities and how uh, all nature is in different parts of the world. And with my kids along, like, okay, do you see this is in like in the US, you see this is in China, it's in Germany, wherever you can join us. I think it's a great opportunity, a great learning opportunity, this course. I, I, I'm really excited to. Yeah, it's that reminder that we are one world, one human race. It's that human, you know, those, those human, the humanness of it all. And it doesn't matter, like for Huenia, it doesn't matter what language you speak. This is like a universal theme. And we are so proud to have partnered with you on this. And we're really looking forward to um, learning with you, alongside you. And we invite people that joined us uh, live or if they are going to catch this after the fact because of time zones um, that they will join us. We got a week to go. Um, I know that we put in that, that link. I'll do it one more time to, um, to grab that link to, to register. But I know if they go to inspire citizens, um, there was another, um, I think it's under eco media too. I think there might be a, a shorter link as well. Is that correct? Yeah, you can get there. You can see it on that main Eco Media page to take you to that second page you just shared as well. And yeah, you know, right back at you guys for just we're so we feel so blessed and have such gratitude that you guys are, you know, a, an important partner of ours going forward. And we can't thank you guys enough for including us in you know all your all this important work. And and we're just so excited for you know what the future holds for for this work. And also some major gratitude as well to to Ivy for staying up late. She was working all day. We were working on some eco photography and eco media stuff and some of our partnerships at a school in Frankfurt and with Chapters International. And she stayed up late to uh, to walk us through. And so Ivy, thank you as well for everything always that you do for us. Absolutely. Thank you everyone. Wonderful. And so we'll- just One last thing, um, <laughs> last, you know, shout out to people. I think, you know, the eco photography summer camp you know, first of all, it's a great gift to yourself, you know, to feel well again, you know, to feel reconnecting again, to feel, you know, beauty and, you know, gratitude. So that's a gift for yourself, first of all. Mm. Carving out that time and space. It's important. So I thank you both uh, for joining us and I will keep on pushing this out uh, for the remainder of this week so that by July 1st, um, anybody that can join us will be joining us, can register. And uh, thank you all. Bye, everybody. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.